Hey everybody, KC here. So education is something that I'm, I'm really passionate about. It's one of the reasons that I spent so many summers um, teaching at Portland State University. Um, it's one of the reasons that I love being in the, uh, having the opportunity to go to places like Portland State, like um, USC, uh, Western Michigan University, Cornell, St. Joe's over the years and spending time with students. Sometimes it's students who are in the undergraduate programs or the graduate programs, and sometimes it's people, students who are in um, executive education programs. And um, I, I think these are, are, are wonderful programs, and I think it's terrific that companies are investing in their students, uh, in their executives, in their employees in this way. Um, WAFC actually has sort of a, the Western Association of Food Chains has a unique relationship with USC in terms of companies all over um, the Western United States coming together and helping to fund USC in a w uh, WAFC in a way that actually then goes to USC and a ton of people over the years have, uh, have gone through that program. There's a food industry management program, there's an executive program. A lot of people have gone through it. And uh, there's, I think, a camaraderie. There's people, you know, they, they, they have a connection to each other that maybe they wouldn't have had if this didn't exist. I wanted to talk a little bit about that um, with uh, Greg McNiff, who is the COO of Stater Brothers, as well as being on the board of WAFC, to talk about the, the specifics of the program and why that makes sense for companies to do that, as well as talk to them a little bit about undergraduates. What are retailers looking for? Uh, so Greg was kind enough to um, to spend a little time with me over Zoom. I should tell you, Greg is a kind guy. He also came in and and uh, was a guest in my my class at uh, West at uh, Portland State University when uh, when he was up at uh, Albertson Safeway in the Portland division. And uh, I hope you enjoy my conversation with Greg McNiff. Greg McNiff, welcome to Morning News Beat. Hey, Kevin. It's great to see you. Great to be here. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Um, so I really want to talk about education today because I know it's something you feel strongly about as, a, as, as an executive with, with, with Stater Brothers and also in your, the role that you play at WAFC. Um, so let's start with the WAFC kind of USC connection. And, and what is that all about? Because to me, it seems... What exposure I've had to it, it seems to me to be totally unique in terms of what goes on in, in a lot of retail uh, environments. Yeah, I, I think it is too. I mean, I, I in a in a prior life, I, I I worked in different parts of the country, and so uh, I can tell you this is uh, fairly unique. I think to the western part of the U.S. Uh, so the um, WAFC is a group of retailers uh, who are brought together uh, uh, for in a kind of a nonprofit type program. Uh, most of the major retailers have. Uh, board members on on the WFC, and that's that's kind of how we support it, right? And the goal is really to drive scholarships for people in the industry. And as you know, uh, uh, the our industry is is really kind of a um, underserved as far as education, right? It's not a highly educated uh, industry, at least hasn't been historically. And as a matter of fact, when I was uh, coming up in the in the business decades ago, it, it was almost discouraged. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what the WFC really does, it's a group of folks that really drive uh, higher level education to folks that are typically high school graduates. Right. And so there's a myriad of ways that we do that. And uh, each of the retailers uh, drives that in their own organizations, as well as, you know, through the board. Uh, but it is, it is unique and special for sure. I've taught a, bu a bunch of times in the USC program and done stuff for Bob Herman's when he was there and Cynthia yeah. McLeod is there now. Um, and it's and it's always interesting because you've got a classroom filled with um, people who are sort of, I guess you'd say, are middle management within yep. from the companies where they work. Yeah. But they've sort of been, I think, have been to some degree, it seems like, identified as being potential, um, you know, higher level leaders within those organizations. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I Typically, what we do is we send our top talent, right? People that we think uh, have, have uh, long runways for us here in the organization. And... Uh, Typically, yeah, they are they are kind of, um, especially as it relates to the FIM program, which is, I think, the one you're talking about, the food industry management program. What's really cool about that, I think, is that uh, the teammates or the folks, the students that go, really get a diverse perspective of the, uh, of the industry that they don't otherwise get, right? So they're in there with wholesalers and manufacturers, brokers, 
vendor partners uh, and other competitors. And they really see a perspective of the industry uh, as they talk about cases, they talk about different things going on in the industry, innovation, for example. They see it from a whole different perspective or lens than what they they have just, you know, working here at Stater Brothers. So for us, that that's just an, an incredible opportunity for our folks to grow and to have a different uh, different thought process uh, about what goes on in our industry. And it does seem that there's a a, com a community gets created out of this. I have um, my sense is that people stay in touch, and I know that I when I go to different things. I mean, I I think the last time I saw you was at uh, California Grocers, uh, yeah, twenty two, and I think a couple of people came up to me during that conference to tell me that they had seen me. They uh, they had been in a class that I had taught at USC. Yeah. So there seems to be a real connection to the program that gives it momentum and sustainability going forward. Oh, absolutely. The relationships that the folks uh, uh, build in those uh, pro in the program, the FIM program specifically, is really incredible. They we, they are lifelong friends. Uh, I, I I can tell you, I didn't actually go through the FIM program. I went through the executive program, but uh, I've got we have a lot of people here that have been through the FIM program and. Uh, they keep in close contact with uh, really all the students that they went through with. It's really, it really is a special uh, opportunity to the folks that go through it. And they know that. They know that they're really getting something special because as, the grad, as you graduate from that and come back to organizations, they're, A, they're, uh, they're far more confident. Uh, in most cases, they, they, they get promotions. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the track record is pretty high that folks get promotions as they come back, not just in our company, but in others. And uh, you know, they all kind of keep track of each other uh, throughout the years and, and through, as their careers grow. It's really cool. Yeah. And I think it's important to make the point that this requires a, 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 um, an investment, not just of dollars, but also time, because those executives, depending on which program they're going through, they're away from the company for a considerable for, a, you know, a not incon a, a inconsiderable period of time. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, years ago, it was a whole year program. Right. Uh, so some of the early folks that went through uh, years and years ago will tell you it was a really long, hard, arduous process. They've condensed that down to about 16 weeks or four months. And so, yeah, but that that's four months that they're out of the business completely. Uh, we don't, we don't, uh, we completely take them out of the business. Yeah. And in some cases, actually, even away from home, right? I mean, there are people there who are not going to USC who are not from Southern, Southern California. Yeah, we actually encourage them to live on campus just because yeah. we want them to immerse themselves in the entire program and that, you know, they're studying kind of 24 seven. So uh, with their uh, teammates and so are their fellow students. So, yeah, they're, they're definitely uh, there's a sacrifice made at home as well. Yeah. Explain uh, the difference because I have you're right. I have taught in the food industry management program. What's the executive program? How is that different? Yeah, so the two USC programs are the FIM program, which is 16 weeks, and then there's an executive program uh, they run a couple times a year, which is uh, a one-week program, basically. And so it's similar in nature in the sense that you get uh, the diversity of thought in the room. You get some mm -hmm. great professors. You get some great uh, industry uh, talent like yourself that, that you know present it at, at those events. But uh, from a perspective of diversity in there, a diversity of thought, you get... Uh, wholesalers, manufacturers, vendor partners, retailers. Uh, so it really does uh, expose people to different thinking. It's, it's kind of a mini version, if you will, but it, it doesn't give you that. Sometimes you can't send somebody away for 16 weeks. I would imagine that, that the uh, in addition to being diverse in terms of where people happen to be working in the industry or even geography, over the years that the program has been in, in place, it also has to be getting a lot more diverse in terms of the people. Right. Oh, absolutely. Been in terms of, you know, in terms of gender, in terms of ethnicity, yeah. uh, in terms of lots of different things. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, you know, Dr. McLeod, yeah. uh, McLeod, she she drives. She's the magic that makes that program work. But she's got such an incredible uh, relationship with really all the executives uh, in, in, among different retailers. Right. And, and across the industry. And, and she's so well respected that she's. Uh, with a little bit of arm twisting, she's able to get uh, a, a really broad perspective of students. So now you're right, they've got people from different countries typically in the program, uh, great diversity of male, female, and uh, just a lot of different perspectives. Yeah, yeah. You know, the bucket we've been talking about is so, sort of the whole notion of continuing education, which I just think is so important. I mean, it's funny when you say um, that in some ways, people in this industry were discouraged from higher education um, you know, at, 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 a, at a, a certain time in history, 
um, now I think it's really, really important, right? Because it's not just, it, it is a so much more complex business in terms of understanding, you know, data management, and, mm -hmm. you know, AI and all the different things that, it, that have changed. Right. What about, um, what about, we have a lot of uh, college students, people who are studying retailing, branding, things like that, who read Morning Newsbeat. So I'm curious, what do you, as a, um, I assume you're not, you're, you're not, you, you like it when people get out of college and come work for you. Yeah. What are you, what are you looking for in terms of, um, in, in terms of mindset, in terms of skill set from yeah. students who are, who are in college and are thinking about going into retailing? Yeah. Uh, yeah good question. Uh, you know, I think fundamentally we're still looking for, uh, and probably more so than in the past soft skills, right? So, uh, so let's start with that. The, um, the old command and control in most organizations just is not, you know, either is not exist anymore or it's slowly kind of uh, exiting, right? Because uh, today's generation, tomorrow's generation just, you know, have no appetite for that. They won't stick around. So we're looking for the kind of the hungry, humble, smart type uh, individuals that uh, really want to learn and are eager to learn and try different things. Uh, but we're also looking for, to your point, I mean, technology has really helped evolve our industry and continues to evolve. Uh, and so we're looking for people that are a little more tech savvy. Uh, our biggest challenge, quite frankly, quite frankly, is trying to uh, identify talent that has uh, technological backgrounds and, and desires, because that's the, the those are the roles we have the toughest time uh, filling. Yeah, I do think it's interesting. I do think that college students, it's you know, the classes I've taught. I mean, they don't even they sometimes retailing is number two or three on their bucket in terms of their list of where they want to go because they think oh if I go to work for a retailer I'm going to be up at three o'clock in the morning stacking tomatoes or apples <laughs> or something like that yeah. you know and that's not what they what they want to do and they and that's number one and number two they don't think of they say they want to work for you know they want to work in branding let's say yeah but they don't think of retail as being a, a as being branding they think of suppliers as being branding and i have always thought that's kind of a a um you know a challenge that retailers kind of have to get over a, in terms of being able to say hey, no no we are we are brands i mean yeah. state of brothers has a brand i mean yeah. it, it it's i mean and it has for years and getting them to, to understand that they can be a part of that it, it probably can be a challenge yeah no you're absolutely right it's it's I always say it's not it's not really the sexiest industry, right. uh, but it uh, it definitely uh, provides all kinds of opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I do think that I, I think, you know, one of the benefits I would say that came out of the pandemic is that people realize that this is a you know, call it an essential industry. Right. Um, there's a lot that goes on. We we served a great need during the pandemic. Uh, we, we stayed open, you know, uh, the entire time. And uh, I think a lot of people had to have now uh, created a different perspective of, of uh, their community grocery store and, and how we support and, and we're kind of there for them uh, throughout that entire piece. But you're right, it's, uh, we have some selling to do to get people excited about uh, all of the different opportunities uh, in retail. Well, I should say that, you know, when, uh, when uh, one summer, a number of years ago, pre-pandemic, um, while I was uh, team teaching my, my marketing, my retail and CBT marketing class in Portland, you were at Albertson Safeway in Portland, and you were kind enough one night to spend, come into my class, spend a couple of hours with the students. I remember you brought a lot of swag. I, <laughs> they were very happy. <laughs> and, um, but you spent a lot of time with those students to kind of let them, you know, connect sort of to what you do. And, you know, and it's, and it's, and something I think sometimes the industry doesn't communicate really well. It's like the idea of feeding people and their families, that's sort of a noble calling. I mean, it's, you know, people don't see it that way, but you, th this industry, as much as any industry, it seems to me, has the ability to transform, you know, people's lives as customers. And because people get to work in, you know, it, people, in a lot of cases, when you're running a store, you're running a significant piece of business, you get to transform employees' lives as well. Right. Yeah, I know you're absolutely right. I, I think, uh, you know, as you said, we, we were kind of the anchors in the community, right? People counted on us. So I think that did help, but we, we still have a, a big challenge ahead of us as, try as, as far as trying to sell uh, all of the different opportunities available in this in this industry. It's an exciting industry. There's a lot going on, ton of innovation. Um, it's it, it's there are great career opportunities for folks in this industry, and uh, we've got to do a better job of uh, well, articulating well, that. Well, hopefully, uh, listening to us talk about it now, people will get, come out and maybe reach out, maybe to you, maybe to Cynthia McLeod, to figure out how do they rep replicate or 
do something like what what WAFC is doing, um, and they could talk to Pat Posey at WAFC to figure yeah. out how do they do these kinds of programs in their geographies, right? Because yeah, I know that that's a great great comment. The, the other thing that the WAFC does do a great job of is is so we talked about the USC programs. That's kind of part of the um, you know uh, the program or the the activities that WAFC drives, but they also really do uh, a great job with from entry level teammates, you know, all the way up to assistant manager and store, for example, and 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 across the the entire uh, uh, network of the of our our company, for example. But they they help with uh, folks trying to, you know, we 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 our goal is really to help people build their or start their uh, education uh, journey, right? So uh, there's a, a certificate program uh, that that it starts out with, and the WSC really support. They pay for that. So between companies like retailers like ours. Uh, we'll front the money, and then the, and WSC will will reimburse us after they complete, graduate. But they graduate an eight course class, and they're all related to the industry. Uh, that really gets them started on that journey. I think the number is like seventy percent of the folks that finish that certificate program go on to get a, a, a an additional degree, typically an AA degree. And uh, now we're we're also creating a pathway beyond the AA to to get an undergrad degree. So it really is a great way for folks to. Uh, you know, start their education at at their convenience, right? From a time perspective, it's free for the at least the you know the first uh, first couple of quarters, if you will, and uh, that's another big way that the WFC or, or the retailers tied to the WFC help support uh, education in the industry. Yeah, listen, I mean, it it it, it is it it's a, implicit. It's probably a cliche, but you know, continuing learning is important. You just get yeah. you get you get smarter you end up having a better, a better, more interesting, more varied career because more opportunities come to you. Right. Absolutely. And and that's to your point earlier, that that's how you see maybe some of the opportunities you didn't initially see. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it's, it's been really productive. Yeah. Greg, I really appreciate you spending a little time once again, happy new year. And I hope I get a chance to, it's winter here in Connecticut. I get a hope <laughs> I get a chance to come to your part of the world pretty soon. Come on anytime. Ken. We'd like, love to have you. Love to host yeah. you. Take care.